Tropical Storm Sayola, a new major typhoon threat. Our newest name storm has formed in the Western Pacific. It was 9W, now named Sayola, and is gradually well, not moving very much at the moment, 20.2 degrees north, 124.1 degrees east, and is gradually drifting, eventually will be moving southwards. At present, it has winds of 50 miles per hour, that's 80 kilometers per hour, with a pressure of 991 millibars, moving northwest at 5 miles per hour, although I actually question that movement, it doesn't appear to be moving very much at all. Uh, but that's the latest as of 8pm Philippine time this August 24th and we do expect that it will move southwards fairly shortly. Here's its current position displayed on the map, quite close to the Philippine Islands but only a tiny wind field at the moment extending out just 25 nautical miles in the southern quadrants. Um, and its position displayed there once again and it is currently 219 kilometers from Basco, 245 from Itbiat, 279 from Santa Ana, 377 from Tugagaro and 703 from the capital Manila. Um, it is also in, within striking distance of Taiwan as well, about 400 kilometers away from the southern tip and some rainfall from the storm could be expected over there um, as it drifts southwards but it will certainly visit again later on in the forecast period as it uh, moves back towards the north again performing a bit of a loop there. We'll see that all in a minute, but right now it is forecast to track dangerously close to eastern Luzon where strong winds and heavy rain is possible and rapid intensification is also possible and a major wind threat later on in the forecast. But as for now, we are looking at flash flooding concerns uh, as the storm's outer bands reach Luzon in the next 48 hours. Rainfall of over 600 millimeters is possible in some of these areas throughout the next seven days. So here's its complicated track forecast then. It initially moves towards the south-southwest, which is certainly an odd direction for a storm to take in the Western Pacific. And then it does a very tight loop there. And this is based on model ensembles, so it could be uh, wildly different. It's a very low confidence forecast. By the time we get towards next week, it's moving into the South China Sea through very close to the Batanas Islands. JTWC forecast code is somewhat similar to that as well. You can see it there on the left as we go through our wind speed estimates. 50 miles per hour right now. JTWC also on board with that. EMA slightly lower. Ultra high res ASCAP though is catching winds near 60 miles per hour and ADT is lagging behind only at about 40 miles per hour. So that's the situation at this time, but a real high chance of rapid intensification due to the small size of the storm and good conditions. Here is a spaghetti model uh, showing the ensembles there, showing the, you know all over the place in terms of where this storm might end up. Uh, but in general, it does end up moving into the South China Sea eventually by day seven. It's just exactly which track it takes to you know get there in the first place. So this is the latest GFS parent run and it takes a storm very close to the coast of Luzon. Tropical storm force winds there but it's a major typhoon by the time it gets there and it probably reaches one or more category 4 peaks during this period and then skimming the northern tip of Luzon, reminds me a little bit of Doksuri, and then out into the South China Sea strengthening again and as just drawing this track along here now once again. So it's a very tight loop and then it moves off towards the west. Uh, so Luzon will be on high alert for this whole seven day period as we watch this storm closely. This is simulated radar imagery showing the storm's sort of appearance there and it does have an eye early on and it maintains it for quite some time looking really good once it moves away from the islands and then moving back towards that region uh, and still holding firm and looking even better towards the end of that seven day period once again. So this could be certainly an ace generator uh, and could become a very powerful storm. I think the pressure estimates that they're going with for on the models right now, I know last night they were talking about higher 930s for the peak. I think they've dropped it a little bit today uh, in strength. 
to the 940s, but nonetheless we are looking at a powerful storm and any slight changes to the track could mean uh, a significant landfall. Now here's the rain expectations, the wettest part of the storm will be the eastern side for that first pass, and then for the second pass uh, it looks like it could be anywhere really, but look at some of those rain amounts over the Philippines, we are looking in for a real high rain maker this one, uh, potentially 27 inches there depicted on that model run, uh, that's getting towards, uh, what's that, uh, 700 millimeters, uh, but look out to sea there, if that track changes and if the storm stalls near the Philippines, you could be looking at high, high amounts up to 40 inches, that's 1000 millimeters, but at the moment that's depicted as being well offshore, which is good news. Sea surface temperatures are decent. Interesting to note there's a little cool patch there off the coast of Luzon where the storm will be tracking imminently, so that might uh, hold it up a little bit, but elsewhere temperatures are good, generally getting to around 30 degrees Celsius, and these temperatures read slightly low, so I think we're looking at minimums really of 28 degrees Celsius there, which is more than enough to sustain this storm. Thing is, if it does make, uh, if it does actually stall for a bit, then upwelling may get to the storm, but as it stands right now, it does look like it will keep up a decent pace and won't have any of those issues. Now here it is on satellite imagery, it is looking quite disheveled and stretched and elongated. Uh, the strongest winds are in the southeastern quadrant according to ASCAT where it captured those nearly 60 mile per hour winds. The northwestern side of the storm is potentially slightly exposed and you can watch all of this imagery on the Force 13 website, force13.com slash satellite. You'll also note a little band over over Taiwan as well, possibly associated with the storm that's been delivering rain. Uh, but over the Philippines themselves, it's just the northeastern tip of uh, Luzon that will be getting rainfall at the moment. Now here's some pretty janky radar imagery. It's uh, been cutting out quite a lot, so this is actually a three-day loop. But if you just look towards those latest frames, you will see the storm's band, a little band there, uh, and potentially the storm's core right towards the southeast. And lots of rain occurring over Taiwan at the moment as a result of this storm. Keep watching, this will be around for quite some time.